This video isn't about viruses. This video is about the fundamental flaws that has existed since Windows inception, and I'm going over those three flaws in today's video. So a lot of people always wonder, why do Windows systems always get viruses? And the cop-out answer to this is, well, most people use it, therefore viruses are designed for it. And why this is partially true, the real answer to this is it's incredibly easy to infect a Windows system because it's fundamentally flawed. And those three flaws is what this video is about. So let's go ahead and jump right into this with flaw number one. The first flaw is unassisted admin user elevation, uh, which is a bit of a mouthful, but basically what it entails is applications can go ahead and elevate themselves in almost every instance. Now, Windows and Microsoft have basically tried to stamp this out by user account control and other methods, but this is just a band-aid on an existing fundamental flaw. A lot of people actually end up disabling UAC prompts because a lot of times they don't want to get prompted three times for programs to run because Windows programs are designed to run certain ways and many of them don't work properly without UAC being disabled. Now, in recent years, this has gotten better, but uh, you know they still exist and UAC, a lot of people still crank that down to never notify. And this is just a fundamental flaw where you take Mac OS or Linux all these types of programs, the user is built on top of like a root account and that root account, it isn't immediately available to everybody. You have to have a lot of things to access it where Windows, it, it wasn't built like that from the start. The second fundamental flaw, and this is actually part of the exploit that came out today about Windows and Huawei, that actually Huawei hardware drivers were causing exploits to cause things to be elevated to where they can run anything on the system and read pretty much anything running in your active memory on a Windows machine that had this hardware driver installed. So why is this a fundamental flaw? Well, how Windows works is you have to install hardware drivers on top of the kernel to have an interface with the machine, have that hardware work with that machine, which is great in all, but it opens you up to a lot of liability and things. Now, Mac and Linux is gonna be my main comparison for today. They actually have most of that baked in. It's true they do have some third-party drivers, but they inherently don't usually use these. By default, almost no third-party drivers are loaded on any of these systems and everything is baked directly into their kernel, so there is no driver installation per se. Now that's not to say there aren't add-in drivers and things like that, but that is after the actual install, after the sale, and, and most of that is not applicable. Like Windows, Windows actually has third-party drivers right out of the gate where they're getting manufacturers and everything writing drivers that Microsoft has zero control over, where in Linux and Mac, this is not the case. It's all from one source, so the security is there. You don't run into this giant exploit like that just got launched today with Huawei. And if you're not familiar with this exploit, I'll put the link down below to a ZDNet article that goes over how the Huawei driver went ahead and elevated all these things and people could exploit certain bug in their driver. The third fundamental flaw to Windows is no permissions assigned to individual programs. One program has pretty much the entire system to go ramp it on in a Windows-based system. In Mac, this is pretty much controlled in the PRAM where everyone must play in their little sandbox. In Linux, they have many different levers to actually control programs or say, hey, you program can access USB, USB devices and you cannot. If you have Linux, that's considered SE Linux if you're in a, a rail-based system or if you're in like a Debian or a Ubuntu-based system that's gonna be App Armor. So just know that, that these other operating system have designed into their operating system ways to actually control specific permissions, what that application can do. Where in Windows, you says, hey, do I have permission? Do I have admin permissions? Yes, cool. Do I not? Okay, well, what can I do as a program? I'm installed, I can do all these things, cool. 
But there's no actual line by line permissions in Windows where it'll say, hey, you can only do this. You can only access these parts of the hard drive. You can only access these parts of the actual hardware system. Uh, Windows doesn't break it down quite like that where Mac and Linux does. And it's way, way more secure than your Windows based system. So the whole premise and the actual catalyst to this video was reading that ZD in that article today and it got me thinking wow there has been some giant exploits and I didn't want to make this about viruses today because we all know Windows machine have tons of viruses written for them it's just mainly these three fundamental problems that are major issues where it's not so much do you have an antivirus loaded because honestly that's a completely separate issue altogether these are just exploitable things that are fundamentally wrong with Windows and really can't be fixed now now, I already went over UAC as far as the first issue. The second issue, that is just how the system was designed. There's no way to actually fix this unless they rewrite Windows from scratch, which we know that's not going to happen because all the programs would need to be rewritten to work on that system because they're written poorly and they're written for Windows. And the third way I think they could institute in the future and give better granularity controls over actually locking down these programs. I'm sure some third party solutions already exist for the specific thing, but I would like to see this really expanded upon on Microsoft's part and really doing a lot better job of actually controlling this because it is just so rampant and these things are just so easily exploitable. It's a nightmare for any kind of system admin or security admin out there where they're actually needing control over their system. They have to utilize a whole variety of third party programs just to secure these Microsoft Windows systems. So if you're a government entity or someone like that that needs really, really good security, you really should not be using Windows because it's inherently flawed. It's closed source. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with security. So I don't fault any kind of security admin uh, for failing at their job just because locking down windows is a difficult one to do when it comes to electronics and security uh, windows is definitely bad it's just um, amazing to me that pretty much any government out there would run on windows based systems when there's far better alternatives available. And that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. If you like this video and wanna help contribute, make more videos like this one, come visit me over on Patreon and I'll see you in the next video.